Hey, good morning and welcome to Life Online. So there's that question, is it worth it? I know you've felt that way at times. I have felt that way probably more often than uh, what I would like to admit. But the truth is that uh, you will find throughout the scriptures individuals that had those same kinds of questions. So one of the individuals that are mentioned, the story isn't told in Hebrews 11, but he's mentioned in Hebrews 11 as a man of, he's commended for his faith. His name is Gideon. His story emerges in Judges, it's chapters 6, 7, and 8. You find him, in fact, God finds him in a, uh, anyway, it's in a, it's in a wine press. And while uh, Gideon is there, he is actually winnowing wheat. And what the story is that for seven years, Israel has been so oppressed by some neighboring people called the Midianites. And they have come in, yes, the word, like a swarm of locusts is used, and they have come in and uh, they've destroyed the crops, they've destroyed all the livestock, and uh, they continue raiding parties coming in. And so you will find Gideon, and he's somehow probably trying to uh, tread out some wheat just to make some grain for his family. And I have a feeling that while he was doing that, he was, was, he was just asking the question, God, why? And look what's taking place, and is it worth it even trying to survive uh, this time of starvation for us as a people? And God sends a messenger to him, and while he's doing this work, the messenger says to him, um, he speaks to him, and he uh, says that the Lord is with you, O mighty warrior. <laughs> and Gideon responds, it doesn't seem to be a faith response, but he basically just says, uh, are you kidding me? What is up with this? He says, look, uh, all of our people are oppressed. Our nation is oppressed. And uh, where is God in the middle of all of this? That's the kinds of questions that he asks uh, of the messenger. And yet the messenger lets him know that God has a very special plan for him. Chapter 6 is kind of some arguing back and forth between Gideon and God. And so, yeah, he puts out a fleece. Uh, ultimately, he arrives and uh, understands that God really is calling him to go ahead and lead the people of Israel. And so in the pursuit of what he does, God takes him, takes him, he assembles an army, but they whittle it down. God has him whittle it down to 300 men. And the weapons that are used are uh, fairly unusual. Uh, the weapons that are used are torches, empty jars, and uh, trumpets, 300 of them, that's what they've got. And sure enough, while they go ahead and uh, blast the trumpets, and they break the jars, and there are the torches and uh, in the night, and the Midianites panic, and they turn on one another, begin to kill one another. And the truth is that the Midianites were defeated and destroyed by Gideon and uh, his small army. Um, there's times that we face impossible odds. God lets us know. It's uh, not your ability. It's not your skill. Uh, it has everything to do with me. Never forget that in the challenges of life. I love how the story of Gideon ends. It says that Gideon died at a ripe old age, and he was buried in the tomb of his father, Joash. But before he died, he knew what it was to experience 40 years of peace. After those seven hard years of turmoil, just to trust God, believe God, do unusual things, but let God um, perform the miracles for you. And that's what Gideon did. And as a result, 40 years of peace, he died in an old age and he was buried with his father. It's not a bad life when you have those questions. Is it worth it, God? Uh, Gideon would say, oh yeah, I'm here as an example of faith. Don't give up. Don't quit. Have faith in God. It's worth it. Hey, God bless. I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Let's make it one, shall we? God bless. Bye.